Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today I want to show you around the new technology inside the 2023 and newer Chevy Colorado as well as the GMC Canyon. This specific truck has the 8-inch digital gauge cluster as well as the 11.3-inch infotainment system, both of which are standard across every Colorado and every Canyon. Now the 11-inch digital gauge cluster is standard in the ZR2 Colorado as well as the Denali and AT4X trims of the GMC Canyon, whereas the infotainment system seen in this video, the 11.3-inch, is standard across the board no matter if you get the work truck trim, LT, uh, AT4X, Canyon, doesn't matter, they all come with the same infotainment system. So today I wanna show you around each of these and uh, show you how they operate and most of the features available within them. So I apologize for the minor amount of glare, but this is a very reflective surface, so it might be a little bit hard to pick up certain things on camera. But anyways, the page in front of us is the page displayed with the least amount of information on the screen. Just shows your digital speed readout, uh, your fuel range in the lower portion on the left side, your odometer on the lower right, your current gear selected in the lower center, some of your safety systems, direction up in the top left hand corner, as well as the ambient outside temperature in the top right. Now using the steering wheel controls, you can cycle between several pages. This is a work truck Colorado, so it doesn't have the off-road page unfortunately, but does have some of the other pages which are standard across the board. So pressing the button once brings up the digital tachometer around the speedometer. You also gain the fuel level on the left side. It looks like a transmission temp. On the right side, you have oil temp as well as your coolant temp. So a lot of the temperatures that are important while using a truck for truck duties, such as towing, are brought up on this screen. Now pressing the button one more time brings up your trip information, both trip one and two on the exact same page. Now we'll get into this a little bit later, but you actually reset this information via the infotainment system, so the main radio screen on the head unit, not via the steering wheel controls um, or via the gauge cluster screen itself. Pressing the button again brings up the content available. I believe this has to do with some of the radio content and media content currently being played on the infotainment system. So we'll go ahead and select XM. And as you can see, it brings up the exact channel that is now playing. Pressing the button lastly one more time brings you back to the original screen that we started out with, which is just your digital speed readout in the center. None of the other information on the sides, uh, nor a tack option. Now you can also control a few other items via these screens and some of the steering wheel buttons on the right side. So if you use the toggle button, you can cycle between your radio favorites without going through the actual infotainment system. So as long as you set a favorite on the bottom of the radio screen, this is where you will be able to cycle through using the little scroll wheel on the right side of the steering wheel uh, without again interacting with the main radio screen itself. Now using the phone button on the right side of the steering wheel, you can interact with a connected phone to the system. So if you do pair a phone, um, you can also call and hang up from this button on the right side. Pressing up, it'll bring up the phone. As you can see, no phone connected, but I will go ahead and connect my phone to show you guys exactly how it works. And then if you press down on the steering wheel button, it will go ahead and hang up or end the call that you're currently on. Using the media or music icon on the right side of the steering wheel, you can cycle between the different media inputs, FM, XM, USB, Google News, podcasts, and a few other options as well. So this is nice to be able to control some of these from the actual gauge cluster without, again, interacting with the infotainment system. However, it might be a little bit more complicated than just pressing the tile on the main radio screen uh, because that is very easy to access, but nonetheless is possible to do via the steering wheel controls and the gauge cluster in front of the driver. Lastly, we have the voice command buttons. This just brings up the Google Assistant built into the head unit itself. So what's the weather outside? On the website forecast.weather.gov, they say mostly cloudy, a slight chance of... So these are most of the features that are available to use on the 8-inch digital gauge cluster here in the newer Colorados. Now, if you do have select trims such as the Trail Boss Z71 as well as the ZR2, uh, you will get a dedicated off-road page menu that brings up your pitch roll, uh, the transfer case setting, and a few other off-road items as well, which you do like to be displayed, obviously, when you're using the off-road functionality of the truck. Uh, so that is not available or not on the work truck, and I believe not on the LT trim levels as well, uh, but you do gain that with the two-speed transfer case and some of the upper trims of the Colorado and Canyon lineup, which are more off-road oriented. So now that I showed you most of the features available with the 8-inch digital gauge cluster, again, standard on every Colorado and Canyon, I do want to show you now how to reset the trip information on this page right here. So as you can see, traditional trip information such as mileage as well as MPG for that trip. And to reset this, again, you do not use any steering wheel controls. You do it on the radio system over here. So on the home page, you see this right here, pressing the little home icon. 
Scroll over one and this should show the vehicle info tile, which you can press and hold any of these tiles and drag them to wherever you would like. It is a very configurable icon, as you can see. Put it anywhere you like, once again, and rearrange them how you see fit. But nonetheless, you can also add it to the left side over here as the main tile if you would like. Uh, but under vehicle information, this brings up a dedicated screen. As you can see, it shows a nice, uh, looks like a more aggressive Colorado on here. But you'll see overview, tires and brakes, fluids and filters, engine, as well as trip. So click the last trip tile over here. And this brings up the trip information, which again, you can reset via the screen. Reset one, reset two, we'll go ahead and do that. Hit reset. And as you can see, it resets on this screen and also resets on your digital gauge cluster. Now on the screen, you also have access to a dedicated fuel economy page. Now this does have uh, your obviously best MPG or average. The more you drive, this will uh, obviously accumulate different information. Also has your overall average for the vehicle. I believe this accounts for the total lifespan or the average for the certain distance that you input. And you can go ahead and add the driver display and it will switch to view this feature which you can see brings up a dedicated fuel economy display over here on the gauge cluster. And you can cycle through all of the same information that I mentioned earlier. And this actually replaces the trip information. So that is no longer there. It is replaced by the fuel economy. I'm not exactly sure why they couldn't have just added this in lieu of the trip information. Uh, but that essentially takes the place of that and you can remove it at any time uh, via that. And it will return to the two trip odometers. Now taking a look at some of these other pages while we're in here, the overview, Looks like you can go around the exterior of the truck, click on the different icons, and as you can see, that shows your oil life, the wheel and tire, tire pressure, and we can expand these further, as you can see, to view all four individually, and it looks like you can relearn them right here from the screen, which is very cool. If we hit add to driver display, this adds the display there for the tire pressure, cycling through all the menus again, and it takes away the trip information and essentially replaces it with the tire pressure. So it looks like you can only have one of these things added to the digital gauge cluster at a time, which is a little bit unfortunate in my opinion. I would probably choose to keep the trip information on there. Uh, however, some of these other features may be more important to you. So you can essentially pick that one item, leave it on the cluster and access all the other system information here on the main uh, vehicle information page. And if we also cycle through the different tiles at the top, this will also display the exact same information as pressing those little icons, tire pressure, brake pad life, fluid and filters, engine information, and of course the trip information that I already displayed. So uh, very useful information. I like how it is on a larger screen so you can see this information in a little bit more detail, uh, but it would be nice to add more than just one of these different tiles to the digital gauge cluster uh, so you can quickly cycle via the controls here on the steering wheel. So going back to the home screen here, as we can see, we have the usual suspects. At the top, you have a digital shortcut for the automatic or uh, manual headlight controls. That is a nice icon. You can also access that through the vehicle page here on the left side. Uh, brings up your door and window settings, lights, drive and park, and other vehicle settings. Uh, very programmable, very configurable, which I do like in vehicles. There's your buckle to drive, on and off, rear seat reminder information, and all the other comfort and convenience. Uh, such as the chime volume, the exterior lighting, like I mentioned, um, power door lock and unlock, collision detection system. So this is your safety systems that you can program to your liking and a few other items as well. Again, this is the base work truck. Uh, so it doesn't have all the full feature functionality, including remote start, the proximity entry, and all that good stuff. But this does have a lot of the same information. Going back to the home screen, though, you can see your audio, maps, phone, trailering, Google Assistant, Play Store, vehicle information. This does have wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. There's your overall settings, Wi-Fi hotspot, camera, controls, My Chevrolet podcasts, and the Google News. You can download some other um, actual Play Store apps if you sign into your Google account, which you can do right there and download certain compatible apps to the actual head unit itself and use them signed in to your actual Google account, which is very cool again. Um, you can see at the top, we do have your little notification slider. There's no new notifications. You can access that via that little bell icon. Here's your Google Assistant. What's the weather outside today? 
Here on the left side, like I said, you can drag any one of these different tiles around, rearrange them on the two different pages. And you can also make any of these tiles your dedicated shortcuts here on the left side of the screen. It comes with the home, media, maps, phone, as well as vehicle out of the box. So clicking on the media, you can cycle through the different media modes right here through this screen, like I said, AM, FM, XM, Bluetooth, USB, uh, Google information such as podcasts and news all through the screen, which is very handy indeed. Going to the phone, you can pair a phone via Bluetooth or to use wireless Android Auto, wireless Apple CarPlay through this screen right here. This is a little maps icon. Go into settings, turn on. This vehicle is still in demo mode, so it doesn't have all the full functionality. But nonetheless, you can see full Google Maps integration here. So pinch to zoom, voice searches, POI searches. This is essentially the full Google Maps that you can use on your computer or Android, Apple smartphone uh, via the app. So very cool to have this integrated actually into the infotainment system itself. And uh, you can basically do anything you would like on this. And again, you do get a little bit more functionality if you are signed in to your Google account. Already showed the media menu. We go to your trailering. This does bring up a light test as well as a checklist menu. This again is a base work truck, so it does not have um, the trailering hitch on it from the factory, but I assume that can be installed after the fact. Play store vehicle information, we'll go into the main settings screen. This brings up your connections via the phones and Wi-Fi networks. Overall display settings, including your instrument cluster. Looks like you can add the speed sign to it which brings it up right there in the top right hand corner. It does have turn by turn graphics as well. So we'll go ahead and uh, input a destination here in a second and see how that displays on the eight inch infotainment. This does have over the air update capability as well. So you can do that right here on this settings menu. It will go ahead and check for an over the air update from General Motors. And just as I expected, software is up to date. It's actually running Android 11 version, which is very cool. A uh, pretty recent security patch, but nonetheless awesome to see that it is running a version of Android. Other system settings are displayed in here. Language, keyboard, units, reset options. You can see the about the Android version. Uh, this is very typical if you guys are familiar with a newer Android version controlled uh, infotainment system. But nonetheless, those are some of the settings available inside of this vehicle. Pull up the backup camera if you like. It does have guidance lines as well as the hitch view. I believe that is actually standard on every uh, canyon in Colorado, whether you actually get the trailering package or not, which is very nice. There's your vehicle controls, like I mentioned. Power window lockout, lights, traction control and other vehicle settings right on here. So yeah, that is one thing to note that there's no traction control button. Uh, that is all controlled through the main head unit itself. You can sign in and create a My Chevrolet account for vehicle functionality via their app. So remote start, door unlock, lock, uh, POI, send to vehicle, stuff like that, I believe can all be done via the My Chevrolet app, uh, which is that page right there. But that is pretty much a full tour of the system here in the 2023 Colorado. Again, this is a base work truck, so it may not have 100% of the features and options, but this is the standard infotainment system across every trim level, Domino's Pizza. Here's what I found for Domino's Pizza location. Head west toward First Avenue East. And as you can see, it is displaying the turn-by-turn -turn Google map information right there on one of the pages. I believe this is the trip information page, actually. Nope, it is the media page. So this is where you'll see your XM display as well as the Google Maps if you have a built-in route set on the infotainment system itself. So that is very cool that this is a functionality that is standard across every truck. And I believe this will be even enhanced more with the 11 inch digital gauge cluster uh, found in the ZR2, the Denali and the AT4X, which actually pull up the entire map here. I believe I saw a leak of that in some of those upper end trucks. Uh, but nonetheless, nice to see that you can get the basic information here with this screen. Um, instead of relying on that of the large infotainment system. So you can have two different things running at once. We'll go home, you can access your say audio controls, 
have that up on this screen while you have your turn-by-turn -turn navigation instructions right here in front of you. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this quick tour of the gauge cluster as well as the infotainment system again on this base work truck trim. If you guys want to see more on this exact Colorado, make sure to check out the dedicated video here on the channel going over the work truck in general. I also have first impressions as well as a test drive video on the Z71, a nearly fully loaded Colorado, which I had very positive impressions on for my first test drive. But of course, I would like to get more hands on time with more trims of the Colorado as well as the Canyon to get my overall thoughts, likes and dislikes and all of that stuff for future videos. So if you guys are not already subscribed, make sure to subscribe for future content. Hit that like button below if you guys found this video helpful and again hopefully you will check out other videos i have on the channel but with all that being said hope you guys enjoyed as always and hope to see you guys in the next one